Busters the name and sort and bombs the game in this action-packed puzzle platformer made by the mad lads at Tall Glass. And to make today's review extra special, I got in contact with the co-founder and lead artist Miles Day, who I held an exclusive interview with, detailing never-before-seen information those other schmucks on YouTube but wish they could have obtained. That will be sprinkled in throughout this video, so stay tuned. So what happens when you take the basic premise of? Throw in some bombs, a little bit of a dash of the attitude of and the funky vibes of Jet Set Radio. But what you got is one of the tightest, most fun games I've played in a while. Meet Buster. Wait, full government name is Buster Bomb Guy? Okay, that's pretty good. This goober is the main character of the game who you'll be controlling. If it wasn't apparent already, the main objective of the game is to sort all the bombs while Buster's girlfriend, Bridget, drops them from up here. <laughs> As with any platformer, you got the usual moves, with a few additions to spice things up. A jump, a double jump, backflip, for the love of God, use the backflip, a mid-air dash to cover gaps, a slide, and the tornado, Buster's signature move. If there's one thing I have to praise the game for, it's how the movement is practically perfect. Everything is snappy, instant, and enables you to play at peak performance. And if you suck at the game and hurt poor innocent Buster, you're going to hell. So how did the name Boom Buster come to be? Well, according to Miles, it was not easy, and the name itself was one of the last things made before the first gameplay video was uploaded in 2023. But taking inspiration from the Yo Noi title, an idea was born. I should probably bring up how this game does have a story, memorable characters, and some world building. Buster and Bridget love creating and blowing up things in their abandoned power plant within Boomtown. And the wizard, yes that's its actual name, absolutely hates the noise. So he steals all their stuff and runs off. While going through the different stages, you'll encounter the wizard's many minions, such as Lip the Lizard, Goblin Jr., who takes two stomps to take out, <laughs> Ball, which looks like what would happen if a Met and a Buzzy Beetle had a baby. who seems to be in a fit, Ritz the not fuzzy, and the most evil of them all, Roger, who can be taken out by a single jump. Did you know Boom Buster was not the first game made by Tall Class? Miles relates that their first game was actually called Alien Xenoblaster, and they ran a Kickstarter, but it didn't work out, sadly. After that, they turned their attention to what would be Boom Buster as a web browser game. Now, going back to the gameplay, there was a very distinct flow that really appeals to me. The early stages are pretty easy, but it's when things get hectic that my neurons activate and I go booga booga. On top of depositing bombs before they explode, the many different enemy types in your way, and the ever-challenging stages, it's good to remember that if you deposit multiple bombs at the same time, you'll get extra cash and your nuclear meter fills up, which makes you invincible for a short while. A word of advice to anyone on the fence about this game, don't let the art style fool you. I've seen people say, oh, this looks like Pizza Tower even though that's completely wrong. The proof is in the game itself. There's a free demo and I highly encourage you try it out for yourself. And how would you describe this game? Miles says epic. They're hoping that when others play the full game, they'll feel satisfied with the experience, even if it's not something exploration based. Another thing I appreciate as noted earlier is the world building and overall flow of the level design, along with the details in the back. Taking a look at all the stages, the tutorial level takes place in the sewers, most likely under the city. Moving on to stage one, we're introduced to the big city where you can get a feel for things and be reminded that bat flips are important. Actually, so important that I had to look into why this was noted twice, and upon further examination, it turns out that in the first demo of the game, nobody would use the backflip because the double jump was OP. So that's why Buster's second jump is nerfed in this demo, so as to give his other moves more practicality. And I need to move the cat because the cat won't get off the microphone! Stage 2 introduces a bit more verticality into the mix with the introduction of falling platforms and clouds to get you around. Stage 3 introduces the switches, one-way doors, and Roger. 
detail many might overlook is how the UI was inspired by Tetris and Puyo Puyo. You have Bridget in the corner displaying what comes next, and the fun visuals which complement the game very well. Stage 4 shows off the jellies, and if you pay attention to the background, there are some genuinely funny and cool projections on the dome in the background. Stage 5 introduces cannons, and these unique hazard floors that bombs can't drop through. Now, the mini boss fight with the wizard is the final stage in the demo, and the objective is still the same. Catch the bombs, deposit them, and take them out. However, in between the bomb catching, the wizard will occasionally drop in to use his evil wizard powers to attack you, such as throwing fireballs at you, summoning lightning to strike you, and his most evil one yet, <laughs> turning off the lights. And that's the end of the demo. So what are my overall thoughts on Boom Buster? Well, if the demo is anything to go by, it's extremely polished and I encourage any of you watching to form your own opinion by playing the demo first. Now, at the making of this video, the game has just become 100% funded on Kickstarter, but that doesn't mean it's all over. There are some really promising stretch goals like Bridget being playable, endless modes, a personal favorite of mine, additional worlds, battle modes, Zig and Eddie, and the wizard getting his own DLC adventure. So what are you waiting for? Back the game. When asked about any beta designs, Miles was kind enough to share one of the first depictions of Buster, who was initially planned to be a bit more of a disgruntled wrecking crew type of character. Now, the full game will have a gallery full of stuff like this, so enjoy this taste of what's to come in the future. And for all of you out there waiting for some more exclusive and never before seen information, here it is. When I asked if the wizard was a Mountain Dew drinker, I got confirmation that he is indeed, and that he's also a monster drinker. As he sits in his cave shaped like his head while complaining about headaches and other stuff like that. And what's Buster's blood type? Quite simply put, it's green. Now, for those of you that actually have an attention span and made it to the end of this video, I do have a special bonus sneak peek. So while I was digging through the game's files looking for some more fun information tidbits and whatnot, I saw a file for World 1. Well, that makes sense, the demo is basically World 1. But what intrigued me was the folder labeled World 2, which is not in the demo. And after opening it, I discovered this text file labeled How could you? So what does it say? Great. Just great. Now you know World 2 is actually the seaside city in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. That's right, now you know that World 2 is actually Rio de Janeiro, home of the iconic Christ of the Redeemer statue. I trusted you not to look through these files, but now you know that World 2 is real. Thanks for leaking our game, idiot. Now, I've never asked people to subscribe before, but if you like my reviews and want to see what other cool games I'm planning on covering, then please feel free to do so. I'm trying to hit 10k by the end of the year. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and a big thanks to all my members on Kofi and Patreon who make these videos possible in the first place. And remember, stay foxy.